We're going to take a look at our Home tab, the Analytics tab, our Project Settings, Reports, Import, Export, Utilities, and then our Modeling slash Drawing Editor. From there, then inside of our Home tab, we'll look at our different Learning, What's New, Community, Resources, Contact, and our About tabs. So let's take a look at our Home screen. Inside of our Home screen here, we are on the Home tab. Looking at our home tab, we can see across the right, we see learning, what's new, community, resources, contact, and about. Right below that, we also do see our recent projects and our pinned projects. From our home screen, inside of the learning tab, we can see it first brings up the help documentation. If I select help documentation, this is going to bring up our home screen and what all is shown here. We can make any changes we need to this. And if we have any questions at any point, when we open up our help file, I can it brings us to whatever window we are in, and I can click on these different labels to have it automatically take us to that and explain what is shown within that. So our help file is gonna be very, very important here. Within our help file, we do have index, which will show everything that is inside of our help file. If I wanted to, I could search inside of here. Or we can just click on whatever we are wanting to look at. Next, we have the getting started videos, which is going to be easy to follow videos that break down some of the most common tasks. Our how to videos, which is going to get you up to speed with the new features quickly and on your own time of the newest version. Next is our training programs, our free webinars. The free webinars will take you to our website and allow you to sign up. We'll look at our what's new. First is our SDS2 newsletter. You, you can subscribe to our newsletter to stay up to date with what the latest news, events, and more of SDS2 is. We have our release notes, which will show everything that has been added to this version. You can sign up to view our upcoming webinars. You can sign up to view our SDS2 blog. Inside of the community, you can look at the SDS2 forums. Again, you can sign up for our webinars. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel, and you can follow us on LinkedIn. Our YouTube channel will post our latest videos, podcasts, and more. It will give various tools or videos on how to do things. Next, we have our resources, which will give us access to our technical support the SDS2 toolbox, which is gonna allow you to download more tools that are not in there by default. You can look at our partner integrations. Next, you have your API documentation, which will give some documentation on how to write your own tools to add inside of SDS2. Contact, you can contact support. You can upload your project if support requests that. You have some different support options, and then you can view our SDS2 resellers. And then in the about, you can look at the version you are running, and you could always copy that and send that if you needed to. Below this, you do have your recent projects and your pinned projects. If I were to change projects, it would show my recent project here. If I wanted to keep our 2021 online training pinned, I can check this little pin and then when I go to my pinned projects, we can see that's there. If I had multiple projects in here, I would just simply click on the name of that to switch into that project. Next, we'll take a look at our analytics tab. Inside of our analytics tab, right now, I don't have anything in here. If I hit refresh, we can see it shows stuff, but because I don't have members in here, nothing's going to populate. We have options to sort by all members, sequence, or zone. We can look at our detailing, approval, fabricator, erector, and BIM graphs. You have an option to view this by member count or tonnage. And then we do have the option to set estimates. So if you want to see your total member count or tonnage or your different graphs based off of the estimates, you can fill out your count and or your tonnage and see all of that information in there. Once I get in there and get things filled out, I can hit the save button and that's gonna generate this information as a PDF. 
As we start using this and getting more and more members in there, this analytics tab will become way more useful. Next is our project settings. If I select project settings, this is going to bring up our job and our fabricator settings. We'll take a look at these a little bit deeper here within the next few videos. And inside of here, anytime we're looking for a specific option, we do have the ability to search for that specific setting. Next, we'll take a look at our reports. So this is where you can go to generate your ABM report, any design calculations, whether that's expanded or short. And then you can generate a report, which will allow you to browse to any report, or you can create your own report template like we had on our home screen where we could pin our projects, we also have the option to pin and view our recent reports. If we look at our system reports, there's some different reports that are in here by default. So if I wanna look at my field bolts, I can see a field bolt summary, a field bolt point to point. All of these are in here by default. These, after they have been run once, can then be pinned from our recent reports. The next thing we'll take a look at is our import. If I select import, we can import a project from our project transfer. If I select this, this is going to bring up a window that allows me to unpack or pack a project. We will be using this tool later on in this training to show how to send out a project. When we are packing or unpacking a project, that is going to come from a .jft file which is just an SDS2 proprietary file. And it is basically just a zip file with an extension given to that. Next, we have our status transfer, which will allow us to send in and out our status information. Under 3D, we have an option to import a model, import from Revit, or import from S3D, or we can import a 2D reference drawing or a job standard. If we're importing a reference drawing or a job standard, that can be a DWG, DXF, DGN file, or a DXB file. We can then go to export, and then here we have our project transfer as well, but for our exporting, our status transfer, our transmittal tool, our CNC information, and then we can export our 3D model, export Revit to a new model or a linked model, and then all of our MRP. So whether we're exporting out FabTroll, KISS, SPN, EJE, FabSuite, Steel Projects, Bill Interchange Format or BIF, P2, Strumis, Advanced Steel, or Strumis BIM Review. Under the 2D options, we can export PDF drawings or CAD drawings, or we can just plot. Next, we'll take a look at our utilities. Inside of our utilities, we have options for our shape properties. So when we created this project, we had a shape file to choose from. The shape properties is where we can go to customize that. Then we have our user and site options, which are going to be options that pertain only to your PC and your options within that. So if I open this up, we can see I have some different options here between our general, modeling, drawings, toolbars, output information, and then our site. Looking at some of our general options, we can specify our modeling layout style, the configurations, our help files, what colors we want things to be, how many mouse buttons we're using. If we take a look at our modeling, we can specify our processing information. If I scroll down a little further, we have an option for our color settings. We have a default dark mode and a light mode. We can specify our background colors, the wireframe outlines, our member lines, piece marks, everything that way. And then we have some same similar options to our drawings. Next, we have our member edit, which we can edit members inside of the modeling from this window. We can update our attributes, our customized interface. We can open up parametric modeling, or we can run a verify and fix. 
Here within our utility functions, this is searchable fields as well, but we can go into our job repositories, our change file sizes, we can convert jobs, we can go into the general utilities, change options, copy, we can copy job standards to global or global to job, we can rename options, we can rename different things, so if I select that, we have the option to rename fabricators, the jobs, project items, or our shape properties. We can replace those values as well, so we can replace the current fabricator settings. We can merge jobs together. We can delete certain things, so whether that's event logging, our external fabricators, jobs, project items, shape properties, status configurations, toolbars, roles, keyboard shortcuts, context menus, some material marks, deleted members, or unused data. Within this, anything you delete within your utility functions using this tool is not going to be recoverable by Windows. Once it is selected from here, that is deleted forever. And then we have some plugins managers, our parts library manager, choice manufacturer manager and passwords. One thing to note since we we're talking about deleting, SDS2 does not have any automatic backup. One thing we suggest is that you back up your projects manually either using your project transfer or a third party software that will go in and copy all of your information automatically. Again, we do not do any of these backups within SDS2, so you will want to back up often basically as often as you're willing to lose work. Now we hope you never have to go to that step, but unfortunately that does happen sometimes. Then the last two buttons we have here at the bottom left, doesn't matter which tab we're in here, is our model, so this is gonna launch our modeling window, or our drawing editor, which is where all of our drawings will live. 